tops. Huh. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Huh. There it is. It's actually something's going on over here. What in the world? So it must be like the PowerPoint, I think. No, I think it's good. I think it's just that the PowerPoint. Maybe there's like Let's another. Let's close everything. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. what's up. This oh, is... that thing. That got me before, and I just gotcha. had, to, had to close everything. Okay. I'm going to watch that. So, what do I need to do here? I think I need to hit just play, and it will come up. Yeah, it doesn't show up until you hit. There you go. All right. There we go. Cool. Get out of your oh, you're fine. space. Do we, we don't need the hot spot? Okay. okay. But I'll, take, I'll, take okay yeah. I'll take lots of pictures that way. Oh, there you go. Good idea. What's up, bud? Good to see you. We do. Elizabeth, maybe we'll just go in this order. I think, right. yeah, I think Kristen wanted to go last, so if you guys don't mind. I think you're good. Yeah, I mean, just from presentations, we'll just go down the row. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I think we can, I think people are taking off their masks when they're presenting, so feel free to do that if you prefer. That's it, yeah, that's it. It's up to you. You don't have to. I mean, I do, but like, these are for credits. Yeah, continuing education credits. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll just have to look around. All right. We'll give folks a couple more minutes here to trickle in. What's that? Um, I don't have anything else. I've got my notes. You need a piece of paper? Um, here, can, can you write on the back of this? Okay. Okay. Otherwise, I'll have a piece of cardboard. I have to ask for a paper from somebody else. Sure. I, I can mention that if you want to leave it. You're going to pass it around? Okay. It's really good to see everybody in person. Yeah. Oh, Steve, you're left handed. Me too. I, uh, I do right, right handed, but there are other things I do left handed and left footed. I used to water slalom ski and I was left footed. Which, yeah. Just, and also uh, shooting bow and arrow or bowling. I'm sometimes better off doing it left. You know. All right, we'll get the show on the road here. Sound good? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. Steve, what's the, do you want me to mention that you'll be passing this around? Yes. Okay, and the goal of this is just to, do you mean to, just, okay. Gotcha. All right. Thanks for joining everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, Steve Grossman's passing around a, a, a list if you want to provide your, your contact information, um, a way to connect people after this if you'd like to receive a list of who's, uh, who's in the room, basically. Um, great. Well, uh, it sounds like we've got a really engaged bunch. That's great. That's, that's what we want. <laughs> in fact, we want to continue that conversation and dialogue here uh, in the presentation we're about to jump into. So you're at the uh, 
residents that lead advancing local waste reduction solutions. So um, welcome everybody. I'm Kyle O'Keefe, Director of Innovation at, uh, and Programs at uh, SWACO. And we've got a great uh, lineup of panelists today for everybody to uh, be engaging with. I'm going to introduce them in just a moment. Um, but today we're here to talk about community-led solutions and, and ways that residents and communities are leading the way. Uh, you know, as a resident in a community, we all have like a responsibility and a critical obligation to help improve our systems, right? And recycling and waste reduction is one really key way that we can all do that. Um, more and more throughout Central Ohio and, and communities uh, throughout the country for that matter, more of these community-led groups um, are being developed. Oftentimes they're committees, advisory groups, or even informal uh, groups, grassroots, grassroots groups that are emerging and really helping to influence and affect these communities, really kind of driving a lot of the change that we're seeing. I can just say this from the role that I'm in, whenever we're talking to communities, we're kind of curious, why are you taking on these initiatives? And oftentimes it is a group of residents who are kind of rallying around certain issues um, that's kind of driving a lot of their interest in policy. So um, today we've got a great lineup to kind of hear from a lot of these uh, groups here locally and throughout the region. Um, and so uh, first we have uh, Elizabeth Elman here. Elizabeth is the chair of Bexley's Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee. Uh, the primary goal of which is to assist the city in accomplishing its zero waste objective by or before 2040. This uh, will be accomplished when the city achieves a 90% reduction in materials disposed of at the landfill. The committee is also charged with recommending and the implementation of programs and strategies and providing advice to the city on other green policies, environmental sustainability, and energy issues. So uh, welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us here. And I'm going to read through these, and then uh, you can come up in just a second. We also have Ingrid Wood. And Ingrid is a well-seasoned professional and director with extensive experience in technology, sustainability, and transformational leadership. She's a digital marketing manager with Heritage La Landscape Supply Group, a national consortium of landscape supply distributors, in addition to a, a career in senior management and executive roles in software development and marketing. Ingrid has created a small business disaster recovery program with the SBA and was chairman of the Green Cities Coalition in Colorado. Since moving to Ohio in 2019, she's become secretary with Sustainable Delaware, Ohio, uh, has founded the Climate Action Working Group, and was executive director for Regional Ohio Action for Resilience. Uh, Ingrid's ground of being is I realize sustainability in all, all of life. So that's great. Thanks for putting that on here. Uh, Kristen Hosen is uh, uh, with the city of Hilliard, uh, has more than 20 years of professional experience uh, and serves as marketing director for Resource International Inc., where she's also heads up the sustainability initiatives for that, that company. Since 2014, uh, Kristen has served as a member and is currently the chairperson of Hilliard's Environmental Sustainability Commission, which is an advisory commission to Hilliard City Council. Kristen's uh, efforts on the committee include uh, leading monthly commission meetings and working with the city departments on recycling sustainability initiatives. She holds a BS in journalism and uh, at Ohio University and currently a grad student on OU's MPA program. So welcome, Kristen. Excellent. So uh, first, uh, we're going to have some presentations by each of these uh, wonderful uh, resident leaders. And then we'll kind of open it up for discussion, really to kind of hear uh, what the community is working on, interest in different topics. I actually see a bunch of people in the community uh, or in the room today that are community kind of leaders and are working on these issues as well. So we'd love to hear your comments as well and your perspectives. Um, so first up, I'm going to ask uh, Elizabeth here to come on up and give your presentation. Let's see, I think this is the one. Thank you're good to go. Thank you. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'm Elizabeth, and I am the chair of Bexley's Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee, and I will be speaking today about our food waste reduction initiatives in the city. So as I said, I am chair of Bexley's ESAC. We were established by ordinance in 2018 to do all of these different things. Hmm. We are an official city advisory committee with three voting members that are confirmed by the mayor um, and approved by council. I don't think we've actually ever voted on anything, but we are there to vote if we need to. And there are about 10 other people who join us on a regular basis, as well as seats at the table for our larger institutions like our schools and the library. 
Green Bexley is our public outreach initiative. It's also the URL to our website, www.greenbexley.org. Sometimes people see the shirt that I'm wearing or a sign on my tricycle that says Green Bexley and ask me what it's about. And I tell them it's either a group of residents promoting environmental sustainability or advocating for the legalization of marijuana in the city. And then they get very intrigued and they visit the website anyway. <laughs> Green Bexley is also the handle for our Facebook and Instagram pages. Be sure to give us a like and a follow. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you never miss another episode. <laughs> I would best say our relationship to the city can be described by this photograph. I've positioned myself to be at City Hall and ensure that everyone knows that I have something to say. Whether or not they listen to it is a different story. So we've come um, a long way, but let's go back in time a little bit. I'll tell you how we got here. Oops. Okay, we're missing a slide, but Bexley began curbside recycling in 1990. And then fast forward to 2016, the mayor convened um, a green team to oversee the development of a zero waste plan. That was approved and adopted in 2017, and that was also the year that the ESAC was created. That was also the year that we rolled out our pilot curbside composting program. In 2018, the ESAC really came to fruition, and in, um, Sorry. In 2019, we rolled out our composting program to everyone in the city who was interested in participating. That was also the year that we started to have more of a community presence um, at composting at city events. And thankfully, our attire has changed since then. In 2020, we instituted our single-use plastic bag ban for the first time. Um, and an interesting stipulation is that at city events, um, the city can, only, city can only utilize compostable or recyclable food containers. So since we already had that composting infrastructure in place, we were able to provide a composting receptacle for those things. Although we have a lot going on with composting, the curbside collection really is um, the most important and we get a lot of buzz about it which is great because it's important for a lot of reasons. One of which is to help us achieve our zero waste goal. So with the adoption of the zero waste plan was the zero waste goal, which is divert 90% of the material sent to landfill by 2040. So as you can see, uh, that's going to be a dramatic decline, especially since we increased in our solid waste sent to the landfill last year. Um, we know that about 15% of what is sent to the landfill is food. So this at-home program gives residents another way to divert that material. Now you're probably wondering, but Elizabeth, how does that work? It's all about the money. And I'll tell you, you're right, but we found a way. So the first thing that we did was we eliminated our concierge trash pickup, which was where Rumkey would pick up your trash from sort of close to your house instead of having the trash being brought to the curb. We did that because only half of the homes were utilizing this service, but everyone was paying for it. And then we applied those funds to our composting program, knowing that not all of the households would participate. So that's how it works at a macro level, but on a micro level, it's actually very easy if the slides work. And, okay, they don't, and this was gonna be the most fun, exciting part <laughs> of the presentation, um, but the way that the program actually works um, is basically, you get your bucket, you line your bucket, you fill your bucket, you tie your bucket, and you put it out. That's it, it's so easy. Does anyone remember the boppets from the 90s? Right, so it was this disc, and it gave you directions. Bop it, spin it, twist it like that. That's kind of how this works, and I really had a great visual about it, but anyway. This is better. It. Thank you. <laughs> you get it. You, what did I say, dump it? Dump it. Fill it. Fill it. You fill it. Tie it, put it out, but it ends in an 
out when I'm writing the visual. Can we all do it together? <laughs> Everyone stand up. I'm going to see if I can find the picture, but it's not here. Okay, here we go. So first we get it. Get it. Get it. We fill, fill it. it. We tie it. it. Put it out. Great job, everyone. Were you a cheerleader? Nope. <laughs> so anyway, once I find that slide in the lovely visual, it will all make sense to you, and you won't think that I'm ludicrous. All right. So um, one thing that we're always looking to do is promote the program. We currently have about a third of our households participating, and the city did a great job of promoting the pilot program and the rollout of the program to the entire community when that happened. But since then, it's mostly been on the ESAC to encourage more folks to sign up. So we did this by hosting a screening of the film Wasted. We also do a lot of posts and reminder emails on Facebook and mailings and citywide emails. We do have two members who canvas and they drop literature at residents' homes who aren't yet participating. Earlier this year, we put out a survey to try to understand people's habits and learn why or why they don't compost. And I know of one OSU class that did a project on how to promote. Despite the fact that only a third of our households participate, it's going pretty well. The bulk of our signups occurred um, when we launched the program in 2019. But we have had an increased number of household signups, and we keep growing. There are always areas for improvement. So obviously, we would like to see increased participation. I would like to use better terminology. Diversion is a tricky word for me because, yes, we are diverting food from the landfill through this program. However, just because it's in the program doesn't mean, sorry, just because the food is in the program doesn't mean it was diverted from the landfill because of the program, because in Franklin County, food that goes down the disposal is also diverted from the landfill. So I don't know necessarily that the food I put out is diverted because of the program, because I could have put it in the, in the disposal anyway. And also, I would like to see a decreased amount of material from each home. So I'm a big proponent that the only thing that should go in are like compostable cutleries, uh, cups, things like that, and also are like peels, pits, bones, shells, skins, things of that nature. And insert here the food waste reduction hierarchy image, where we focus on reducing food waste at the source, and whatever is left, we feed to hungry people, and we only compost as the second to last option. Oh, there we go. All right, we are always looking to expand. So currently, um, we've expanded to our community gardens. The gardens each have toters, so gardeners can put their plant material in there. Um, at our city-hosted events, there is composting. And we have a pilot program with our restaurants. Right now, we have two restaurants participating. What we'd like to do in the future uh, is increase our restaurant participation, have uh, a partnership with the schools and composting at all events that the city promotes. Composting is one of the many initiatives and projects that we work on, both the ESAC and the city. And if you'd like to learn more about them or know anyone else who wants to, feel free to let me know. Here's my contact information, and thank you so much for having me. presentation there. You caught us off guard with the whole dance. I wish we would have known that. Um, let me see here. Just a second. All right. Up next we have Ingrid Wood. So Ingrid, come on up. All right. Should be good to go. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. Ingrid Wood. I'm Secretary for Sustainable Delaware, Ohio. Um, I've only been in Ohio about two and a half years now. Um, before I moved to Ohio, I already found out about Sustainable Delaware, Ohio, because prior to this, 
I was uh, chairman for Green Cities Coalition in Colorado, and I wanted to be involved with a sustainability organization. I love grassroots work. I want to work where we live, and I want to improve sustainability and environment where I am. So I already was in contact with them. I got here in June of 2019, and in August I was on the board. <laughs> They always want to people, so. Um, Sustainable Delaware is uh, not part of the city. We're a complete separate organization, and we're heavily focused on education and advocacy. And I would say here recently, we have uh, moved into activism as well. Um, I will go into a little bit of that, and a slide on happiness. I figured we could all use that. So here's a sample of people, and some of you may know some of these folks. Uh, Terry Hermson and his wife Leslie, David Carpenter, David Soliday, Steve Gregory, um, Stephanie Meyer Gregory, and Marion Jack, who has since moved to, I believe, North Carolina. It's really, uh, you know, I just always admire people that are a stand for the environment, They're the most passionate people, they give the most of themselves in their time that I know. I'm always proud to be a part of them. And then next, happiness. Actually, this is a slide about planning. And I do a lot of strategic planning for work. So I've been a business um, consultant in software development. And then after that, in um, disaster recovery, and it's like, okay, who are we? What are we about? And that is really what strategic planning is all about. And it ties into this. So if you actually take some time out and think about what you care about, what you want to work on, and then reap your rewards, it is not only what I think or what I say, but it is what we think, what we say and what we do, they are in harmony. And then as a group, and then also in partnership, because that's my biggest takeaway here is a partnership. You form partnership with other organizations that have similarity. There's overlap, recognition. So it's one of my favorite quotes, and I thought I'd put it in here today. So on recent activities, um, Sustainable Delaware, uh, works with Keep Delaware County Beautiful on cleanups, specifically different sections of the Olentangy watershed. Um, we work heavily with Unity Community, which is uh, was known as Second Ward Community Initiative. It is one of the underserved areas in Delaware County. And um, we used to meet at their community center We've worked on um, growing gardens with them, and the kids now sell their produce, which is awesome. They have their own little farmer's market. And we also have done cleanups with them. We also partner with Main Street Delaware. Uh, they organize First Fridays, and we always have participated with First Fridays. Um, I have a separate slide on the bag monster, which is kind of fun. Um, one of the longest lasting issues in Delaware has been uh, smell. We, we're not really sure whether it is air pollution, but it was definitely the odor from Liberty Casting. And um, after years of working with Liberty Casting and the city, Liberty Casting was able to procure a million dollar grant with the EPA, and they added uh, a, p a building where they added an add-on to their facilities where the casks could dry out longer before they would be used. So should have cut the odor by 50%. And as a result of that, there was uh, a lot of communication between Liberty Casting and Sustainable Delaware. And we also wound up doing a roadside cleanup right where they are. Then education. So this is a picture of our Unity Community Center. Um, we have our monthly business and board meetings every second Saturday of the month, and it usually t turns into about a two-hour session where um, we go over some board issues and 
you know, things that we need to get taken care of. But there's an open forum for people to talk about and ask questions and, you know, try to get projects started. And that's what we support them with. Um, as I was saying, uh, also educating during our first Friday events. And uh, there are always a lot of people there. I haven't been going recently, but um, they organize a lot of fun, music, entertainment, uh, food. They had the antique car show, this, this last one. Um, so we bring our education to the people there. Bishop Backers is with Ohio Wesleyan University. That's their fundraising event, so we also work with them. We hosted a series of workshops, uh, eco-workshops, at Unity Community Center, and one of them was about zero waste and upcycling. Um, and then together with the city of Delaware um, and Olentangy Watershed Alliance, so that used to be, I think, now, Northern Olentangy Watershed. They've rebranded themselves. Uh, we participated in the Olentangy River Festival, which just happened a couple of weeks ago. Here's our bag monster. It has since disintegrated. Um, so we may have to make a, another one. And I actually learned something putting this together, that this was in 2016, uh, that the average American uses 500 single-use plastic bags every year. And I was at the grocery store the other day, and here's this person double-bagging everything, like there's two items in a plastic bag, and I almost like went and talked to them. And sometimes I do, but I didn't do that this time. Uh, so we really, you know, educate there, like show people this is the amount of waste that we create. And I'm reminded also of somebody who collected all of the plastic that they were using in a year and it filled up a whole room and, you know, if you can like make it visible to people, that really helps. In um, 2006, no, 18, 17, I wasn't here, so, but it was around there. Um, Sustainable Delaware organized a no-impact week. So every day there was a specific focus. The first one was a buy-nothing day. So try to go a day without buying anything. Uh, trash day, so there was a video post about how you could reduce your trash. Um, transportation day, about I was training specifically on the data bus. Uh, food day was all about eating locally, and uh, we provided an energy audit, a tour at the Water Education Center, a giving back day was all about volunteering, and then they did a movie showing of No Impact Man, and I haven't seen that one, so it's on my list now. Um, the chairman of SDO, and then myself also, we created a Zero Waste Ohio group, and Zero Waste Delaware, Ohio, and they are very active. There are Facebook groups, and there's a lot of like very practical information about, you know, what kind of uh, compostable toothbrush to. I mean, I make my own uh, deodorant and toothpaste and things like that. So, you know, you educate people on how you can do that and all kinds of great information. We had a skip the straw initiative, and really encouraged local. Uh, restaurants, merchants, to allow people to bring their own devices and their own um, containers. And that was Mary and Jack, who since then has moved on. And I don't really know how much came out of that, but I know it was going on. Here's the Liberty Casting, what I already talked about. Comprehensive plan. We had a number of our members working on the um, committee that worked on renewing the comprehensive plan. I haven't read all of it. I read one section. <laughs> it's like one of those big, thick ones. But a, a number of things that we have proposed or we were looking at actually made its way into the comprehensive plan without a formal process since we're not part of the city. But they do listen, and I believe that we do influence them. Um, some of the other initiatives, there's, there's two big ones going on right now. Um, for the sixth year in a row, the city of Delaware was not going to put renewable energy aggregation on their ballot. 
and that was January 31st, and something in me gave way and said, this shall be. So we, we wrote lots of letters to the city, because it's really doable. It is really about granting the city the authority to, instead of go to brown energy, to go to clean energy instead. Um, but it was, there's been a lot of pushback, a lot of back and forth. People want to try to put the cart in front of the horse. Um, at least that's my experience. So having facilitated meetings every other week, um, the city finally said, yes, we will put it on the ballot for May of 22, if Sustainable Delaware will do the campaigning. And we said yes. And then since then, things have changed again. I'm not quite sure what the city is doing. But I learned just yesterday that the county commissioners are looking at banning adding solar to private properties. Like you cannot put solar up anymore. So there's probably something political going on there that influences the city as well. So it's, it's the political game, as you all understand. And we were kind of in the dark. So I'm hoping to find out that it's still going to happen and that we can move forward. We um, connected with Ohio Environmental Council on this, and they put us into contact with Power Clean Future Ohio. Power Clean Future Ohio has put together about an $80,000 budget to do the campaigning with us. Um, and I am not putting all my eggs in one basket. I'm also looking at getting the Ready for 100 uh, started through the Sierra Club. So that's what we're working on with this. And then last but not least, um, a success story here. Uh, about a year ago, it was June a year ago, I got wind of a uh, piece of property that sits across the road from Stratford Ecological Center and State Preserve. Uh, 23 acres was up for sale and developers wanted to put high density housing on that. It is a piece of cropland you see here right under the save uh, word. And Stratford didn't want that. They actually put an offer on the land. They didn't get it. Um, the residents don't want it. And we as Sustainable Delaware don't want that either. What we do want to see is to restore the old wetlands that are on the property, which the soils there, the water, actually feeds into vernal pools in the forest in the state preserve. And so we're looking to push to stop high density development and to be able to actually restore the wetlands that are on that property. Created a petition at the beginning of August and in two months we had about 800 signatures. Um, the zoning board, this is Delaware Township, um, called a meeting and we had a meeting this Wednesday night, night before last, where um, I submitted the petitions and wrote a statement, and the board found a lot of errors with the um, developers as well, but they put in a motion to disapprove the appeal on the zoning code, and it was passed unanimously. So we stopped high density development across from Stratford, and I'm super excited about that. Um, out of that, a lot of talk about we really need a land trust, so we're having a strategic planning session to get that started at the end of this month. And that is um, what I wanted to share with you. Um, here's our information, and it's my pleasure to be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ing Ingrid. Next up, we have Kristen. I'm sorry, what? The no shopping day, it online, online shopping counts. Online shopping counts. <laughs> and it's, they're, they're still active. You can look them up and sign up again and do a week of it. Yeah. 
Hi everyone, I am Kristen, and I was trying to think of something funny to say when I got up here. The only thing I can think of is that my last name gets pronounced a hundred different ways. So it's actually Hosni with a long I, but I tend to say Hosni myself, and I also get Husini and a whole bunch of different things. So um, anyway. Um, I am with the City of Hilliard Environmental Sustainability Commission, and um, this, uh, oh, actually, I'm not on my first slide here. Second. Wasn't, hold on. I know that. Okay. Um, anyway, the, the, the Hilliard of, City of Hilliard Environmental Sustainability Commission was um, passed in 2011 as part of the City Charter Code of Ordinance. And prior to that, it was called the Evergreen Team. And so the City of Hilliard has been doing um, a lot to, for sustainability initiatives for, for years now. So our current commission has nine voting members and then one city council representative. And I have a couple of our members here in the audience, if you guys wanna raise your hands. <laughs> we have a great team and we all love working together. We meet on the second Wednesday of every month at 545 at City Hall. And the purpose of our commission is to really advise city council and the city uh, officials on ways that Hilliard can reach sustainability goals. So um, we're constantly keeping up to date on environmental trends and things like that. So um, some of our initiatives, which I have up here, are we also have a Take the Pledge on our Go, Go Green Hilliard website. Um, we have an annual Earth Day celebration every year, which is free for the community. And then we also host biannual recycling collections, which have been very amazing, which that's gonna be the focus of what I speak about today. Um, we are also have a KAB affiliate called Keep Hilliard Clean and Green, which has really um, taken off here in this past year. And then we also have some community gardens. And the pictures I have up here, I just wanna share a few of them. Um, you can see one of our um, foam collections. We have a picture over there. Um, we used to take the foam up to Knox County. Um, so you'll hear more about that with our, with our new project, the community densifier. The little girl in the middle there, um, sitting on that bench, that's actually my daughter. And we had a project a couple years ago where um, one of our commission members had heard about these recycled plastic benches. And so the community and the schools, we collected 2,600 pounds of plastic bottle caps and we then went out and had, I think, 12 benches made into them, and now they're in our parks and our pools, and we move them around town. Um, but that was a really fun project. I tell, um, I always bring it up, I brought it up at lunch today, that I never want to see a bottle cap again <laughs> because we had to do, we had Girl Scout troops helping, we had to sort through them, and you know, like you're talking about education, and we were getting things like contact lens cases, and just, stuff, you know, it, people didn't realize, oh, anything plastic, I can throw it in here, it can be turned into a bench, but, um, and then, you know, there's a picture of our team, there's the bottle caps, and also a picture of one of our big shredding events where we had um, lots and lots of boxes of shredding that um, took a long time to uh, dump and get rid of. <laughs> So focusing on waste reduction initiatives, um, I wanna thank Swaco. We've had a great partnership with them on several initiatives. And the big one is our new Central Ohio Community First Foam Densifier. And um, that's on the next slide. But we, um, our other waste reduction initiatives are the curbside residential recycling, which, is, which isn't new. It's been great for the city residents. And then also in partnership with Swaco, we have a food compost drop-off. Um, and that's the picture there with the green bins. And that has been going very well, actually. Um, and then new this year, we also had compostable cups at our Dora events. And that was very fun to, um, to have that in play. And we got all the, the local businesses and establishments that participated in the Dora to, to use these cups. 
Um, we also just kicked off a brand new recycling center similar to what Ingrid had shown um, that at our community center. And this is for like specialty type items like candy wrappers and personal care packaging. Um, Greg back there, he just wrote an article about this new, this new recycling center and um, that'll be in the paper here shortly if you guys want to read about it. And then our semi-annual recycling collection events, electronics, paper shredding, and then restore for like home items for Habitat for Humanity. And then also we have um, implemented more recycling bins at the pools to get, um, and that was also a partnership with Swaco um, to get you know, more of the recycle items out of the landfill. So this is the big exciting project that I wanted to talk to everyone about. Um, we have had some members of our commission who have just been very passionate about foam recycling. And um, I'm going to read a little bit from our letter here. Um, you know, as, as we know, the downside to styrofoam or polystyrene is that it degrades very slowly over hundreds of years when it's placed in the landfills. And so until now, there was not a readily available place to take this material in central Ohio. Like as I said before, we have been taking it up to Knox County. So when we submitted this idea um, for to, with, to Swaco to get some grant funds, um, we thought, hey, we can get this densifier and we can have all the communities in central Ohio be able to come and benefit from it. So that's what we're doing. Um, the machine is up and running. We're actually having our first collection tomorrow from 10 to noon at City Hall. So if anybody has any styrofoam in their garage or you know any neighbors or anyone that's holding on to anything, please feel free to stop by, but there will be plenty more opportunities. Um, so, and these pictures here just show a little bit about how it runs. Now, I don't know the specifications. If you have questions about specifications with the machine, um, that's more our operations staff. They have done a wonderful job. This project has taken probably between 10 and 12 people to really get up and running. Um, you know, it's, it takes a lot of power. We had to, you know, do an expansion with the electrical. Um, and then this picture right here shows what happens um, once you put the styrofoam in, then it comes out and into these bricks. Um, and then we also have an, an end buyer, I think that's the correct term, who, who will purchase um, the bricks. So um, a little bit about like what can go in there. Um, the styrofoam must be clean. Um, we ask people to remove stickers and tape from it. Um, styrofoam food containers are not accepted. And then um, the, the foam packing peanuts, we're still like, we will collect those tomorrow, but they have to be processed separately. So, um, you know, that's not preferred, but we will take them. Um, and then also it's very helpful when um, the community uh, gets their styrofoam together that they put it in a plastic bag so that it's not flying around. Um, so anyway, that's a little bit about the project. And um, here is what we accept and what is not accepted. Um, like the, the colored foam is not accepted. Um, so we are really, really excited about this. I have, um, if anybody is interested, uh, we already have communities interested. We will also accept um, businesses to participate as well. And so I have some letters here that talk more about the program and how you can schedule to do a community event in your own community and how you can get the foam to Hilliard for um, densifying. And then I also have a couple of the what's included and, and what's not included. So um, we are also happy to answer any questions um, once we're done. So thank you so much, everybody. Wow, some really uh, great presentations and awesome activities going on throughout Central Ohio there. Um, I bet there's some questions out there, right? There's a lot going on, but you guys are kind of relating to a lot of what we're talking about. And let's just open it up. I've got a, questions my, a couple myself that I can throw out there, but any questions from the group? Good. Matt. How long did you guys take to get this done? 
do you think? Oh, the question. Do I have to say it for the live stream? The question is, how long does a head of lettuce take to decompose in a landfill? And I want to, what is your guess? That is incorrect. Has anyone seen the movie Wasted? The answer is 25 years. <gasps> I know. Good question. Trivia question right there. Yes, go ahead. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. So we are going to have regularly um, scheduled community events. So like right now, we have two on the books, um, the one for tomorrow, and then we have one for December 30th. It's either the 29th or 30th, which will be publicized. And then we plan on having two more this year still. And then there will be opportunity for people to um, drop it off so the machine's not constantly going to be running so these are more just like the drop-off collections and then when our operations staff gets time they will um, you know run the machine you know one time so yes there will be opportunity and the communications we have talks about um, contacting you know the the operations team um, for actual residents though I think that um, I would recommend that they hold on to their foam and then wait for like the drop off. But if if they like say someone buys something really huge and they just want to get the foam out of their garage and they don't want to wait, then I mean we will work with. They just need to reach out to us and we'll we'll schedule a time for them to drop off their foam. Awesome. Yeah. Sure. Doing the, the styrofoam collection? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's actually something we're, we're looking at. Um, no, that's all right. Yeah, and, and I think that's part of the goal of the, uh, the, this effort too, is communities can individually collect that material and take it to this facility. So it's really something that's available to all communities throughout Franklin County. Uh, it's certainly something that we're looking at. We would need to have a facility where this material could come to. So those are some things that we're talking about for the future. Can we establish a center where more difficult and harder recycle materials could come? So something in the works, but not there yet today. So good question. Good question. Uh, other questions? Yeah. Not officially, no. Tell me how that works. How's that working? We, so we do our own projects, and we organize them ourselves, and we implement them, and it's often in partnership with other organizations. So with um, Unity Community Center, or with Preservation Parks, or sometimes we do work with the city um, on events, so we will partner with them there. But we're not, we don't get direction from the city. If anything, we're the ones who holler at them and say, hey, this is something that we should be doing. Um, yeah. We write them letters and uh, no, it is not. Um, right. And with the renewable energy aggregation that we have been pushing and proposing, that started changing. So there's more communication. There was more communication going back and forth with the city. But as I said, something just changed just last week, and I don't know what it is. So it's, you know, since we do not have an official relationship with them, we're kind of hanging. And I don't like to be hanging, so I'm going to say, okay, if they don't want to play with us, then we're going to keep forging ahead. So, yeah. We really work on anything in the county. It's really, uh, I would say, the, more of a regional item because we work outside of city limits as much as we work inside of city limits. So 
it's across the board. Yeah. Good question. Um, and I do yeah. have uh, one thing that I didn't put in the slides, but um, with regional Ohio Action for Resilience last year, what came up was the fact that our current existing solid waste uh, facility, and I can't remember the name of them now, they're not able to handle all of the waste that is being produced. So we're still shipping stuff to landfill. And um, so I had been asking uh, if there was somebody interested in starting another solid waste management facility. Um, and I don't, I don't know if the city is planning anything, but there's definitely room for activity like that. An opportunity, for sure. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Other questions from the audience that you might be sitting with at the moment? I'll throw one out there. I mean, it kind of was uh, brought up a little bit ago, but you know, how do you encourage more residents to participate in these groups, right? I mean, part of the goal is you're all residents in your communities, and you're kind of. Uh, you know, actively promoting and advocating for different solutions? How can we get more participation from residents in your types of initiatives? Um, well, I will go first. To, yeah, goes to um, Because we just had a young man, he's 15, um, he's from Hayes High School. Um, he joined us at our last renewable energy meeting. Um, he's part of a small group at the high school called Climate Changers. And he wanted to see what we were up to and see if he wanted to join us. And he told us that we need to do more fun, funner stuff, is what he said. <laughs> so, um, and I've asked him, I said, okay, let me know, what do we do? Because I would love to get high schoolers and young people involved in more of what we're doing. And I do, I do know there's families showing up with kids, specifically at the, um, the cleanups and the community gardening. So, really making it fun and having great activity, you know, not just sitting in a dry Zoom meeting. So that's what I would say. Do you have any? Sure. Yeah. That's a question I don't have an answer to. Um, but I think we could look at this through three ways. One of them is people who join our committee, the other is who participate in our activities, and the third is the sustainability actions that people are taking at home. Um, so ever so slowly we're getting more people to join our committee um, and we've also are working on a partnership with the schools um, with the high school environmental club to get more people interacted more people involved in our like litter pickups and things like that um, and i'm seeing more and more people advocate for sustainable practices at home as well so across all three of those fronts i think we're making moves but they're slow I'm just going to brag because I think that Hilliard is just, we have quite a bit of participation. Um, we, our recycling events, our great turnouts, our each year our annual Hill, uh, Earth Day event gets more and more people. So I think it's just as each year goes by, people hear about uh, what we're doing and, and, and the events we're doing and then and then they want to participate in it as well. So um, I think what I started in the commission in 2014, our Facebook page only had, I think, 88 followers and now I think we're up to close to a thousand. Um, so it, it, it's just each year it keeps growing and growing and, and we do talk to the schools and we get student volunteers to help us and we have great support from city management. So it's just been great. I mean, obviously you wanna get more and more people to participate, but I think, I'm, I think we've done a pretty good job. That's awesome, yeah. And uh, I, I know we got some folks in the audience too. Linda, you're here, you're kind of a part of a, uh, a resident group as well. You work a lot with residents and doing some great things in Grove City. I think you guys were up here just a little bit ago talking, and so I'm sure you can relate to a lot of um, what's being discussed here, but. Absolutely, any I mean, I, we, we're, we're seeing the same thing in Grove City with our events. More and more people are coming out for them. <laughs> I think that uh, I'm gonna have to say probably COVID did a little bit of that because people just wanna get out and experience new things, et cetera. <laughs> so, but you know, we're appreciative for any amount of turnout that's over and above what we've been doing, so. And I think that Initiatives that a lot of the communities in Central Ohio have. Yeah, 
Absolutely, yeah. A lot more participation. I mean, we're seeing that in our programs as well. Um, so a lot going on there. Um, resources. Resources are always limited, right? With all these groups, it's sort of what can we do? What do we have to work with? And um, are there some resources out there that you guys can think of that might be helpful for participants or vice versa? And I'll, I'll even give a call out here. We've got some of our partners in the room with Ohio EPA as well, Dave here. Um, and I think you guys had a presentation on your grant program uh, just earlier in the day. So great program. I think that's going to be opening up here in the next couple of weeks. So something to look for um, as well. We can talk more about that. But are there are there resources that you guys can think of that you might recommend to folks in the gr group or folks in the room who might have resources that might be benefit to, uh, to communities as well? Well, I think the first and foremost, you want to figure out what it is that you want to do and then go talk with your community partners. So a SWACO, if you're looking at doing something waste related, go talk with your community bank about some initiative that you may have, they may want to be involved. Um, Parks and Rec, always a great partnership. Um, Soil and Water is also great. Now, if you're looking for money, um, I don't know Ohio well enough yet, so I'm, I'm learning as to what, what is available. Um, but like, be specific, like have a specific ask, and then just start knocking on doors, I think is uh, what I would recommend. I think that there need, when it comes to an education component and resources, there are our partners like Swaco and the Recycle Right um, tool where you can look up, hey, I have such and such, I don't want to throw it in the landfill, where can I take it? It's such an easy tool to use and I'm constantly going on it. So, I mean, that's definitely a, a very, very good resource that everybody should take advantage of. And then also, um, our commission, Melissa back there, she's scheduling um, a Rumpke uh, tour. And I think there's just, it's eye-opening. And it's a, also a good resource to kind of take tours of some of these facilities that, that process um, and take our, our waste and recyclables because it's just, um, you know, many people don't know you know what can and cannot be recycled or thrown in, thrown in the trash so those two right there are, are very good resources That's great. anything you want to add yeah you commented on uh, tours so tours are a great way to expose council members community groups um, very engaging. Uh, you mentioned the Rumpke Recycling Facility located off of Fields Avenue. That's wonderful. Um, if you'd like to get connected with them, we'd be happy to make an introduction. Uh, we also offer tours of our landfill. So that's very eye-opening for a lot of people to see what gets put into the landfill, how the landfill is run. So they're a great combination, a great kind of one-two punch if you can. Uh, and we're happy to provide those to any groups as well. Um, any other uh, questions or comments? I know we're getting close to time here, but I wanted to see if we had anything else. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, come on up here if you'd like. So my name is Steve Grossman. Um, I'm a member of Bexley's Environmental Sustainability Advisory Committee. And um, last February, we put on um, under the sponsorship of Morpsy with Brandy Whetstone leading the way and the sponsorship of Bexley with Elizabeth leading the way. We put on a resident-based environmental sustainability forum. Absent today is um, the folks from, I gotta think about this, Westerville, We're getting some feedback. Worthington, yeah, let me get further away. Yeah. Westerville, Worthington, um, Grandview. We had, um, we planted the seeds in Gehanna, which the mayor has recently uh, said that uh, has given somebody the go ahead to create a group. We uh, planted, I'm not sure if we planted the seeds with New Albany, but New Albany is, you know, I went around finding out where everybody is from, and we planted this, uh, somehow we helped, or maybe we didn't, but New Albany just created, um, in July, a council or commission, I'm not sure what the formal title is, and um, they don't have a chairman yet, but we're gonna soon to find out who that chairperson is. 
And we discovered afterwards that Upper, on, um, Upper Arlington has a group, um, not clearly, I'm not clear of the relationship with their group with the city, but I know they created a nonprofit um, and we will, pro we will look, everybody, when I went out um, two months ago, uh, questioning if people, you know, what the folks who participated in that forum in February, if they wanted to proceed, and they said yes. So um, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go forward with working with Brandy and with Elizabeth and Kyle to figure out um, what the format for that is. My sense will be in some evening, uh, someplace. <laughs> and, um, you know, do we, do we shift it around throughout the area or do we just have one, one locale? If we can, hopefully we'll continue to do it like this in person. Um, for those of you, and I, you know, went around, I think I got where all of you are from. I know some of you are from Delco and from OSU and Battelle, um, and we'll think, you know, if you haven't heard from me in a month, uh, please let me know if you want to be part of what we're doing. The focus has been on community, uh, but with the folks from your group, <laughs> I forget, uh, the, the clubhouse, if you want to participate in this, and we're basically making this up as we go along. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Um, most of us have relative freedom with the cities that we're associated with. Not all of us has that, or the, you know, the political entity that we're associated with. Um, I know in Bexley, you know, we work very closely with the city. I believe that these gr our groups should be related, should have um, a good relationship with their political entity. Um, whether it's, you know, I, but I know it's not perfect in all places. Um, I'm also really interested, I know Ingrid had told me that there's such forums as this in, um, I think Washington and Oregon, you yeah, said? Oregon and Colorado. Yeah, and so, I'm inter so I'm interested to learn what's going on there and also need to find out from a, a national level for, through the planning uh, trade association that Morpsey is part of, what they know of. Uh, my sense is we, what we're doing is relatively unique, but we'll find out. And so we'll, we will be in touch of, you know, what the next, you know, what it looks like as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, let's give our round of panelists just a final round of applause. Thank you. If you need credits to sign up for credits, we do have a, a form up here as well, so feel free. Otherwise, thank you for participating. Have a great day. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks, Brandy, really. Everyone. Yeah. It's just, it's just so, oh yeah. Fading. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, it's hard. I'm this like, time of day, I'm just ready to be. I know. I was like starting to. And, and got off the track. I'm just used to being on a monitor. Right now. Okay. It's like, oh, I'm no. hard. Good. Good. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Um, we should have done some more of those dances Elizabeth had going on. So. That was great. Thanks for your little. I that was awesome. Actually, I love getting I up really and doing the dance. Yes. Yeah. had a link to a, the commercial for Bop It. And then I had an image of like the word. This was much better. Was Thank you. Yeah, I like the demo. Thank that was you. good. You need anything, Brandy? No, I don't. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Thank you so much for your support and Everybody from Swaco's done a great job, like the entire day throughout. Good, good. good. Um, Anything we can help with? Just let us know. Yeah, it was it was nice to have the different like the different sessions like kind of had different themes where they talked yeah. about their waste and recycling, and so it was really woven in good. very well. We appreciate it. And yeah, yeah it's great. Did all this. He organized all this. So. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have to present. <laughs> so.
something that's a little more interactive maybe. Is that what you're thinking? Thank you. 